14 years ago, racing at Imola was seen as a usual occurrence for an F1 season and was taken for granted. Little did anyone know at the time it would take so long for Formula 1 to return to the infamous circuit in Italy which was playing host now to the 2020 Emilia Romagna Grand Prix, also known as the San Marino Grand Prix. But it wouldn't be your typical race weekend with there being no Friday practice and just one practice session before qualifying on Saturday morning. So it was essentially a rerun of what the drivers faced at the Nürburgring but with warmer temperatures meeting the drivers on Saturday. Practice was not as eventful as we thought probable but it would see some interesting storylines develop that eventually played out later in qualifying. The first part of qualifying saw the usual victims eliminated with the only Italian at his home race forcing further misery on Italian racing fans by qualifying in last. The second part of the session was see a minor surprise with the team who was third in the constructors coming into the weekend having both cars eliminated with Perez 11th and Stroll continuing his shocking form in 15th for racing point. Ferrari driver Sebastian Vettel was at least keeping up a consistent pattern of results despite that consistency being him knocked out in Q2 almost every weekend. Esteban Ocon was another driver to fall by the wayside despite his previous experience of racing at Imola but he couldn't use it to his advantage. Into the shootout of Q3 the midfield battle looked a bit different to the one in Portimao and a different victor of that battle would emerge with Pierre Gasly continuing his fine form with fourth place at his team's home Grand Prix. There is just something isn't there about Gasly and Italy that works magic. At the front, it was Lewis Hamilton looking the favourite for pole after topping the only practice session and was on provisional pole, heading into the final run of the session. And he would improve his final run before his teammate Bottas would invoke the spirit of his hero on a stunning lap. <laughs> Valtteri comes to the line, goes on to pole position. It was truly one of the Finns' best laps of his entire career. This is how the rest of the grid lined up for the race at Imola. As the lights went out in Italy, the mad descent to turn one began with Max Verstappen brilliantly capturing second from Lewis Hamilton with Daniel Ricciardo and Charles Leclerc also making important moves at the start. Lance Stroll proved unable to utilise his usual great starts by wiping off his own front wing against the back of Esteban Ocon's Renault, signalling an end to any hope of a points finish for the stroller. There would be further contact on lap 1 with Vettel's Ferrari spinning out the Dane of Kevin Magnussen who would later retire due to headaches caused by the upshifts on his gearbox. As the race settled down, the battles for victory in the midfield developed as expected with Bottas winning the fight for the win and Ricardo winning Formula 1.5 for now. Further back in the midfield pack, the McLarens were busy swapping positions with Sainz passing Norris and setting after Albon and Kvyat with the team desperate to improve on their qualifying performance on Saturday. But Pierre Gasly all was not lost after losing 4th to Ricardo at the start as nearly 10 laps into the race he was right behind looking to make his way past but then got some awful news. Okay Pierre listen to me, I'm really sorry we have to box, we have to box and retire the car, we have a terminal situation on the car. Pierre was robbed of the great result he deserved after the weekend he had. A few laps later, the man he was battling against along with Leclerc, Norris, Albon, Kvyat and Ocon pitted to cover off undercuts from behind from drivers such as Antonio Giovinazzi, who made a great start from last to get up to 14th place. That decision would go on to backfire for some though. At about a third's race distance, Max Verstappen was the first one to blink on a pit stop up front as he set out to undercut race leader Valtteri Bottas. This would be unsuccessful with Bottas pitting a lap later, but this battle was by no means over. Valtteri, you see, had damaged his floor due to collecting debris from a Ferrari, most likely a Vettel, on lap 2, and was now struggling for pace 
and all at sea. And with Lewis Hamilton staying out much longer, could he jump both Bottas and Max by the time he pits? We would find the answer to that very soon after Esteban Ocon's retirement with a clutch problem on his Renault on lap 29. This would bring out the virtual safety car for no good fucking reason. Lewis Hamilton capitalised on this by pitting and rejoining in the lead, but to be honest, with the laps he put in before his pit stop, it was inevitable he would rejoin in the lead after his stop. Another person who did a super job on the overcut was Sergio Perez, who before the cars of Albon, Leclerc, Ricardo, etc. had pitted quite a few laps before, he was down in P11. But with the laps he put in right before his pit stop, he got up to a net fourth place. It is still a massive disgrace. This man is currently on the unemployment line for next year. As we entered just about the final third of the race, some of the drivers who started the race on mediums near the back were finally starting to pit with Sebastian Vettel putting in a fine display in the first 40 laps as he pitted for the hard tyre with the real possibility of a points finish. As he pulled into the pits though, commenced the main event of today's circus show. Back to the fight for second where Bottas was now struggling to keep his car on circuit going slightly off piste at Ravazza 1 giving Max Verstappen a mega run onto the pit straight where he would complete the move for second. His hold on second would end dramatically a few laps later as he suffered a massive tyre failure heading towards the Villeneuve chicane causing a safety car. This would lead to a flurry of cars in the pits pitting for soft tyres to try and go for it on the restart. One of those would be Sergio Perez despite now holding third place after Verstappen's retirement. It would go on to be a colossal mistake made by Racing Point. A colossal mistake would be an understatement in describing George Russell's crash out of a points position under the safety car after getting on the gas too hard on cold tyres. His team radio transmission would sum it up. Don't know what to say. I think Ericsson hit us. Inheriting that position would be granddad Kimi Raikkonen who would go on to finish ninth after replicating a similar great stint to what Vettel had done earlier and would pick up the official driver of the day. On the restart though the action was not up front but in the midfield with Kvyat passing both Albon and Perez into turn one with Albon struggling on hard tyres compared to soft tyre runners around him as he lost position to Perez at turn four. Then a corner later committed a mistake that will surely result in only one course of action. You're fired. Back quickly with Kvyat, he was having a go for fourth around the outside of Charles Leclerc at turn seven and made it stick brilliantly as he was torpedoing through the field, gaining three positions on a single lap and set after Ricardo for the podium. There would be though no further racing as Lewis Hamilton came across the line at the end of lap 63 to win at Imola with Bottas second completing the 1-2 and the team taking a 7th consecutive Constructors' Championship. The empire of Formula 1 still shows no sign of loosening its grip on success anytime soon. And coming home for his second podium of 2020 would be Daniel Ricciardo just about holding off the flying Russian behind in another great drive by the Australian. As for the rest of the field, this is how they finished. And this is how it affected the Drivers and Constructors Championship standings. Now the race on Sunday at Imola was decent but nothing special in the end but it was good to be back at this track. Sadly for us though I don't see us ever coming back here due to the reputation of the track as Liberty Media who are masters of PR know all too well what Imola is most known for. This track is absolutely good enough to be on the calendar but money is always the order of the day for Liberty when deciding on a calendar. Next up is the return of the Turkish Grand Prix in Istanbul in a race that is sure to be tough on tyres. And just to let you guys know, there will be a qualifying and race reaction stream respectively for that Grand Prix with the possibility 
of a video coming out next week before the weekend is underway. So make sure you keep an eye out on the channel for that. And until then, it has been me, Shazza HD. Goodbye.